Hi, Jason Gnall, GQ Barbecue. Are you looking for a creative way to make potatoes? Today I'm going to show you how to make the volcano potato. It's going to be smoky, it's going to be cheesy, and it's going to be a real head turner. If you want to see how we do that, it's coming up right now. For proven recipes and techniques using live fire, smash down that subscription button and hit that bell notification and you won't miss any of our videos. So the first time I ever saw someone make the volcano potato was Jason King over at Barbecue Food For You. If you haven't been to his YouTube channel, go check it out. He does a great job making all kinds of creative stuff over there. He was the first person I saw make it, and now I've seen so many other people do their spin on it. Today I'm going to do my spin on it. This is also the very first time I've ever made this, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. We're going to make the volcano potatoes using russet potatoes. When selecting them, it's very important to try to find different potatoes that are going to all be approximately the same size and also the large ones because we're going to be coring out the inside that we need a large potato to work with. I'm going to start by washing the potato and poking a couple holes in it. This will allow the steam to escape and the potato to cook evenly. One of the things that's gonna set these potatoes apart from traditional oven baked potatoes is we're gonna cook them on the drum smoker. That's gonna get a good smoke flavor into the potatoes. I believe smoke sticks to moisture, so I'm gonna put a light coat of canola oil around the potato before we put it in the drum. We're gonna let these guys cook at about 340 degrees. Our target is gonna be until they become fork tender. If you happen to have regular oil, Go ahead and do that. I don't have any, so I'm using this, the oil that's here in the can today. I'm gonna put a couple strips of bacon on the drum also. This we're gonna use to make our stuffing for the volcano potato. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to make the lava for the volcano potato. This is gonna add a little bit of flair to it and give it a good appealing look. Uh, I'm gonna take some sour cream and I'm gonna add some barbecue sauce to it. Today I'm using the Hottish. What I like about the Hottish is it's got that little bit of zing, that little bit of back end heat that I think is gonna complement uh, the creaminess of the sour cream. I'm gonna go about a five to one ratio of sour cream to barbecue sauce, but adjust to however you like it. If you truly want to make this volcanic, add your favorite hot sauce to the lava. So our bacon's been cooking for a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and season the backside with the rub. Another nice thing is that this rub's got salt in there and what we're looking to do is get this bacon as crispy as possible since we're going to use it on the inside. So the salt will help draw out some of the, the moisture and crisp up this bacon. So I'm going to let that go for a couple more minutes until it's nice and crispy and continue to let the potatoes cook. Okay, our bacon's been cooking for a couple more minutes. It looks done to me. What I'm going for here is I want nice, crunchy, crispy bacon that we're gonna use to stuff the potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these guys and reserve these to the side until we're ready to fill the potato. So these potatoes have been cooking for about 45 minutes and they are soft to the touch. I'd say they're probably about 80% done. So I'm gonna pull them off because I'm gonna amp them up a level by wrapping them in bacon and getting them back onto the drum. Of course, I can't put bacon on the pit without rubbing it down with a little bit of the rub first. I just love what the rub tastes like on bacon. So in an attempt to get some color on the potatoes, I'm gonna add some barbecue sauce. I'm using the Hottish. Since we're gonna be filling it up with a bunch of cream and cheese, I wanna bring some heat to the potato. So we'll let these guys go for about five to seven minutes to let that sauce set up. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and core out the inside of the potatoes so we can make our twice baked part. I highly recommend using a melon scooper for this. It's gonna make it a lot easier. So 
this is what we're going for once it's cored out. And we'll fill that with our twice baked part. Into our potato mixture, I've got some melted butter that is firmed up thanks to the cold weather. I'm also gonna add some, a little bit of cheddar cheese, not much, just for color. Where I'm really gonna bring the cheese flavor is some grated Parmesan. Of course, I'm gonna be adding the bacon that we made earlier. I gotta tell you guys, I have been snacking on this for the last 45 minutes. This bacon is absolutely fantastic. If you have the rub at your house, add a little bit to the bacon. You guys are gonna love it. I'm using my hands to do it because I don't have a problem doing that, but if you happen to have one of those piping bags, you can use that to put it back in here. It might be a little bit easier. Or you can take a plastic bag, fill it, and just cut off the corner, and that will work too. But I don't have any problems just using my fingers to stuff the potatoes. just pulled the volcano potatoes off and all good volcanoes need one thing and that's lava. So now we're going to add the lava to the potatoes. If you remember it's just a little bit of sour cream and barbecue sauce and we're going to run it right over the top and the residual heat from the potato should melt some of the sour cream and allow it to run down. These potato volcanoes look like they're erupting with flavor. Only one way to tell. Now for my favorite part, taste test. Wow, absolutely fantastic. I love that big bite I took with the lava, sour cream, that little bit of barbecue sauce added a flavor that I've never really tasted on a baked potato before. I definitely got the smoke flavor to come through in the potato. The inside part with the butter, the cheese, and the bacon, absolutely fantastic. Guys, if you want to impress your family and friends, this is a real head turner when it shows up on your plate next to a steak. Something I definitely recommend. If this looked good, if it's something you want to try, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, Jason Canal GQ Barbecue.